بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا توسر وتم بالخير Lesson number two In this lesson we will learn about ليس That means is not Then more about the word ibnun That means the son or son And then we have uh, We will learn more about inna Let's see about Laysa. Laysa is a past verb, but gives the meaning of present. So something very uh, important that we need to know that Laysa is a past tense. That's number one. And number two, we need to know that Laysa does not have the present tense. Uh, so it's only used as past tense. However, it gives the meaning of the present. It is used with a nominal sentence to complete its meaning. And it requires a subject, which is mubtadaun, and predicate, which is khabarun, to complete the meaning. And when laysa is used with a nominal sentence, the subject is called ismu laysa, and the predicate is called khabaru laysa. So it's very important verb. Also, one more thing we need to know that it is called uh, al-ismul manqus, defective, sorry, al-fail al-manqus, a defective verb. And why it is called defective verb? Because it cannot communicate the meaning by itself. That's why it needs ismu laysa and khabaru laysa. For example, we say, ذهب Bilal Bilal went. The meaning is clear. خرج Bilal left. The meaning is clear. But if we say, laysa Bilal Bilal is not. So now it's not clear. Like when you say, laysa Bilal uh, Bilal is not. So now uh, what we need to say, uh, we need to complete the, the verb, so we will say, or we have to complete the sentence, so we will say, Laysa Bilalun Mudarrisan, Bilal is not a teacher. Now the meaning is clear, so that's why it's called a defective verb or al al manqus, defective verb. So it's very, very important to know, and that's why um, it always needs uh, Ismu Laysa and Khabaru Laysa. And it's basically from the sisters of Kana, we have Kana wa akhawatuha. So we have learned in the previous lesson Inna wa akhawatuha, and now we will learn about Kana wa akhawatuha. So this is one of the sisters of Kana. Uh, the, the sentence, for example, Al Kitabu Jadidun, the book is new. Uh, Al Kitabu is Muptadaun, and Jadidun is Khabarun, subject and predicate. But when we say Laysa Al Kitabu bi Jadidin, the book is not new. So Laysa is fail, as we can see. Al-Kitabu, uh, it was subject, but now it changes into Ismu Laysa. And Jadid, basically Jadidun will be Khabaru Laysa. However, uh, there is an addition of Ba, harf Jarba, as we can see over here. So it's harf Jarrin Zaidun. Laysa Al-Kitabu, bi Jadidin, the book is not new. Now, a very important point about uh, this harf jarba when we talk about the modern standard arabic or when we talk about min min ghayri al quran other than the quran then we will say harf jarrin zaidun this is extra ba over here but when we talk about the quran as we know that there is nothing that is zaid or extra in the quran when we talk about grammatical sense so grammatically we will say that this is harf jarrin zaidun but in Quran, it is called harfu tawkidin. It is used for the purpose of emphasis. So whenever you see the combination of laysa, and after laysa, we have ismu laysa and khabaru laysa. If there is harfu jarba connected to it, that means that is harfu tawkid. That is used for the purpose of emphasis and not for, uh, or not to say harfu jarin za'idun. For example, um, in Surah Teen, we have Alaysa Allahu bi ahkamil hakimin. Alaysa Allahu, so uh, we have Hamza al istifham, then we have Laysa, and Ismu Jalala will be Ismu Laysa, and bi ahkamil hakimin, bi ahkam will be uh, Khabaru Laysa, but then Harfija, uh, we will say this Harfu ba at Tawkid, wa Laysa al Zaida. So I hope inshallah it's clear now. Okay, so now let's look at the conjugation of uh, Laysa. And uh, if you remember in, in book one, we have learned the con conjugation of uh, Dhahaba. 
the past tense and we have learned dhahaba and we have learned the whole conjugation for example dhahaba dhahaba dhahabu dhahabat dhahabata and dhahabna you might have noticed that i have uh, i have written over here track 1 and track 2 so the conjugation of the verb as when we talk about the past tense it's like the two tracks of the train so the train uh, like it starts moving from track number one. So we say dhahaba, dhahaba, dhahabu, dhahabat, dhahabata. And when it reaches form number six, for example, this is one, two, then we have three, right? And four, five. And when it reaches form number six, uh, now the change takes place. Uh, what's the change that takes place over here? We can see that here uh, the second uh, letter is is mutaharrik. Uh, ha has fatha, dhahaba, dhahaba, dhahabu. Uh, and similarly, the third letter is also mutaharrik. So ba is mutaharrik, ba is mutaharrik. Also here it is mutaharrik up to number five. But when you reach number six, ba becomes sakin. Can you see over there? So the third kalima, which becomes, it becomes sakin. So that means uh, from here, the second track of the train has started. So it will be dhahabana. It's not dhahabana. It's the habna. So what happened? Uh, the first letter is mutaharik. Uh, the second letter is mutaharik, but the third one has become sakin. So that's why I call it the second track of the train. And if you remember, I told you that if you are able to memorize the conjugation of one verb like dhahaba, uh, which we did in book number one, that means you can memorize the conjugation based on this pattern. You can memorize the conjugation of all the verbs in Arabic language. So it's like one time investment. If you memorize one conjugation best based on that, you can make all the conjugations that you can see over here. So track two starts from, from number six, the habana. And then after that, it continues and you will see that the third letter will always be sakin. Uh, so starting from, from number six or track two, the habana, the habita, the habtuma, the habtum, the habti, the habtuma, the habtuna, the habtu, and the habana. Okay, now we, on the same pattern, let's do the conjugation of Laysa. So we have Laysa, Laysa, Laysu. Same, Dhahaba, Dhahaba, Dhahabu. Laysa, Laysa, Laysu. Laysat, Laysata, and then Lesna. So number six here, uh, because we have the weak letter over here, which is Ya, please remember that there are two weak letters in Arabic, Wow and Ya. And whenever we have the weak letters, so many changes will take place. Inshallah, when we learn in detail, in lesson number 25, 26, we will see uh, that there will be so many changes that will take place. However, here we need to know, lesna, how it has changed from, uh, how, how it has become lesna. So it's basically the original form is laysa plus uh, noon al uh, Attanith, which is used for or noon and niswa, I should say, sorry. Noon and niswa, this is the noon of the um, feminine, okay, for feminine plural. So, laysa plus na becomes laysna, laysna. Now, what happens over here? We have iltiqa'u sakinain, that means we have the meeting of two um, letters that are sakin. Ya is sakin and sin is sakin. Ya is sakin and sin is sakin, and it's not possible in Arabic language to have two letters that are sakin together. It's not possible. So now what we have to do, we have to drop one letter. And please remember, whenever we have two letters, one is weak letter and one is the regular, the weak letter will always be dropped. So we know that ya is the weak letter. So when we drop it, it becomes lesna, as we can see over here, lesna. And then we continue the conjugation from lesna. We are on track number two. And based on, on this pattern, you can complete the rest of the uh, six forms or I should say yeah, eight forms. So lesna, and then we have lesta, lestuma, lestum, lesti, lestuma, lestunna, lestu, and lesna. So that's what we need to know, like how to conjugate because we have we have started verb in book one already. We have memorized the conjugation of the dhahaba. And now you have to memorize one conjugation of laysa, which is very, very important. And we have seen that it's a past tense, but it gives the meaning of present. And uh, similarly, sometimes ba is connected to a khabru laysa, which makes it more emphatic. And this is the conjugation that we have to memorize. Ad-Darsu Al-Thani, lesson number two. Hishamun Hisham. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hisham, may Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be on you. 
Bilalun, Bilal, wa alaykum assalamu. And we know that meme is sakin. And whenever we connect meme with al, meme is always connected with dhamma. Generally, we connect sakin with kasra, but meme has a special rule. Whenever you connect meme with sakin, it is always connected with dhamma. Wa alaykum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kayfa haluka ya akhi? How are you, oh my brother? Manil akh. Okay, so let's see over here. May Allah's uh, peace, mercy, and blessings be on you. Uh, how are you, oh my brother? Manil Akh. Who is the brother? Now, now we can see over here that man means who and man is sakin. And when we connect sakin with al, we connect it with kasra. Generally, we connect with kasra, but when, when we connect meme with al, we connect it with dhamma. Uh, when we say Manil Akh, it's a polite way of asking a stranger who he is. So if you see a stranger for the first time and you don't know who that person or who that person is, so you will say Manil Akh or Manil Ukht, depends on the person. So Manil Akh, it is a polite way of asking a stranger who he is. Hishamun, ana mudarrisun jadidun bil jamiati. I am a new student. Uh, I'm a new teacher in the university. Now, if you look at the preposition ba, uh, you will see that it has lots of uses. And I think it's the most frequently used uh, preposition in the Arabic language. So we have seen that ba comes with khabaru uh, laysa and it makes it more like emphatic. Uh, and similarly, when you talk about the place where you live, or the place where you work, then for the place we also use harfijar ba. Uh, we have seen that it also means in or with, for example, bismillah, rahman, rahim. Similarly, when you talk about laysa, ismu laysa, and khabaru laysa, we have ba connected to that. And now when you talk about the place where you live or the place where you study, and then we also use the preposition of ba. Please note it down because ba has several uses. Ana a subject, madarisun predicate, and manu'ud, wajadidun na'at, or masufa sifa, bil jamiati in the university. Ismi Hishamun, my name is Hisham. Ismi mudaf, mudaf ilayh, plus subject, and Hishamun will be predicate. Ana minal wilayatil muttahidati, I am from the United States of America. Wilayat al muttahida, United States of America. Bilalun, Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bika ya akhi. Welcome to you, oh brother. And now you can see again that when you welcome someone, also you you, you use the preposition of bi, ba. So you see one more use of ba. So ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bika ya akhi. And inshallah, when we start learning the verbs, I will explain it to you. Uh, like ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban also, it's a complete, these are complete sentences. And uh, as you know that this is Lughatul Hadh, so something has been omitted in the beginning of Ahlan, and similarly in the beginning of Sahlan, and similarly something in, in the beginning of Marhaban has been omitted. Ya Akhi, oh my brother, Ana Masroorun Bilqa'ik. I'm happy to meet you. One more use of Harfi uh, Jarba. So Sarra Yasurru, it comes with the preposition of Ba. So Ana Masroorun Bilqa'ik. I'm happy to meet you. So now you can see that on only in two sentences, we have three uses of preposition ba. Ana zamiluka, I am your colleague. Ana subject zamiluka, mudaf mudafileh, predicate. Ismi Bilal ibn Hamidin. My name is Bilal ibn Hamid. So now we can see over here that kalima uh, Bilal, few things that you need to know. Number one, when it comes between two Definite nouns, when it comes between alamain, because Bilal is definite noun and Hamid is definite noun, and then the, the Hamza is dropped. That's number one. So the first thing that you can see, Hamza is dropped. Number two, uh, whenever it comes between two uh, definite nouns, for the first noun, it becomes Sifa. So now we can see that Bilal is Mosuf and uh, Ibn is Sifa. Or in easy words, you can say that it carries the same ending, uh, which is the ending of the noun that comes before it. So if the noun before this has Dhamma, it will take Dhamma. If it has Fatha before it, then it will take Fatha. And if it has the noun before it has Kasra, 
then it will take kasra. Why? Because it is being used as sifa. So we know masuf and sifa are equal in uh, capacity, status, number, and gender. So in this case, we have ismi is subject, and Bilal ibn Hamid is predicate. So my name is Bilal ibn Hamid, and we know that the kalima ibn is used as mudaf. So for the second noun, it will be used as mudaf. So Hamid is mudaf ilayhi. So that's why it is majroor, as we can see here. So ismi Bilal ibn Hamid. My name is Bilal ibn Hamid. One more, once again, uh, when Bilal, when ibn comes between two nouns, and these must be two definite nouns, then it carries the same ending, which has the ending of the first noun. Uh, and it will be used as Mosuf, uh, Sifa. So the first noun that comes before it is Mosuf, and this is Sifa. And the noun that comes after it will always be used as Mudaf Ilayhi. So my name is Bilal ibn Hamid. Uh, in the Quran, we have Dhalika uh, uh, Isa ibn Maryam. So Dhalika Isa ibn Maryam. So inshallah, whenever you look, uh, whenever you're reciting the Quran, you will see that whenever it comes. Uh, between Isa and Maryam alayhi salam, when it, whenever it comes between these two nouns, then it will always be without Hamza al Basil and also it will have the same ending or the same case ending as it has the case ending of Isa alayhi salam. I mean, Washington, Anta ya Hishamu. Are you from Washington or oh, Hisham? So the translation is over there. It's for us, for the purpose of, uh, you know, like, as a reference, so in case uh, we didn't get the idea, we can have a look at the translation and then we can go by it. I'm pleased to meet you. I'm your colleague. My name is Bilal ibn Hamid. Are you from Washington? Oh, Hisham. Hishamun, la, no. Analastu min Washington. I'm not from Washington. So, how do we get the meaning of I'm not? Uh, analistu. So when you do the conjugation of laysa, 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 laysu, and you go to the 13th form, it will be listu. Analistu bin Washington. I'm not from Washington. Inni, indeed I am, min New Yorker from New York. So we know that inni, ya al will be isma inna, and min, min New Yorker will be khabaru uh, inna. And similarly, in listu, when we say listu, so basically, ta over here is ismu, uh, Laysa and Min Washington will be Khabaru Laysa. And here, Inni Min New Yorker, Ya Al Matakalne will be Ismu Inna and Min New Yorker will be Khabaru Inna. And we know that New York is the name of the city and all the cities are Mamnu Min Asarf. That's why it does not accept Kasra. Here it is, it is, it is basically Majru, right? But it does not accept Kasra because it's the name of the city. Bilalun, Bilal. A Muslim on Abuka, Ya Hishamu. Is your father Muslim, O Hisham? Hishamun, La Hua Laysa, be Muslimin. No, he is not a Muslim. Now, Hua uh, is the subject, then we have Laysa, uh, and then we have be Muslimin. So, Laysa, now we will say that whatever we have, like the hidden Damir uh, or the hidden pronoun in Laysa, that will be Ismu Laysa. And be Muslim and will be Khabaru Laysa. No, he is not a Muslim. And here, uh, because it's not uh, uh, it's not from the Quran, it's regular Arabic. So we will say this is Ba Zaid. But uh, when it is in the Quran, then we will say this is Ba of emphasis. Uh, so Hisham says, La huwa Laysa be Muslim. Uh, no, he is not a Muslim. And we know that Ba is Harfijar. And that's why the noun that the, the noun that comes after this will be majroor. Bilalun wa ummuka a muslimatun hiya and your mother is she a Muslim? So we know that when we talk about uh, feminine noun ummuk, then we have to use the feminine noun. So he says wa ummuka a muslimatun hiya and your mother uh, is she a Muslim? Hishamun la hiya laysat bi muslimatin. And no, she is not a muslimah or she is not a muslim. In English, we can say both muslimah or muslim. So again, la hiya laysat. So when you do the conjugation of laysa, it will be laysa, laysa, laysu, laysat. Hiya laysat bi muslimatin. She is not a muslim. Bilalun alaka abnaun ya hishamu. Do you have sons or Hisham and, and now you can see that uh, Laka is Jar Majroor 
and jar majroor cannot be subject it is it is always predicate so this is predicate and abna on is the subject do you have sons uh oh hisham so hishamun naam yes li sittatu abna in i have six sons so now we can see over here that li is jar majroor and it is in the beginning of the sentence so it is predicate and sitta to abna in will be the subject so he says yes i have six sons bilalun atullabun hum are they students very simple sentence atullabun hum are they students hishamun la hum laysu bitullabin no they are not students now you can see that laysa laysa laysu so hum is the subject and laysu is the predicate and we know that subject and predicate are equal in number uh in number and gender so hum is it means they and laysu means also they so that's why this is a subject and this is predicate we know that the verb can be predicate but then when the verb is predicate it should be equal to the subject so if it is huwa it will be laysa and if it is huma it will be laysa and if it is hum it will be laysu la hum laysu bi tullabin no they are not students inna ba'dahum indeed some of them and we know that uh, after inna the noun will be mansub so that's why it will be ba'dahum and we know that kalima ba'd is also used as mudaf so ba'd will be mudaf and hum will be mudaf ilayhi inna ba'dahum tujarun indeed some of them are merchants wa ba'dahum muhandisuna and some of them are Uh, engineers now why do we say ba'dahum here because we know we have vowel atf so the noun that comes before vowel atf will have the same ending as the noun that comes after it inna ba'dahum so ba'dahum will be ismu inna and we know ismu inna is always mansub and tujarun is khabaru inna and khabaru inna is always marfu' so that's why we say tujarun inna ba'dahum tujarun wa ba'dahum muhandisuna uh, indeed some of them are uh merchants and some of them are engineers bilalun bilal alaka banatun do you have daughters so again we have uh, alaka banatun uh, laka will be uh, jar majroor predicate and uh, banatun will be the subject mubtadaun hishamun naam yes li khamsu banatin yes i have five daughters again we can see that li is jar majroor in the beginning of the sentence so it will be predicate and khamsu banatin will be the subject and we know that the numbers from 3 to 10 i hope you don't forget and the numbers from 3 to 10 are opposite in gender so bintun is feminine and that's why the number that is being used is for the masculine it does not have the marbuta so he says yes i have five daughters bilalun amutazawwijatun hunna are they married mutazawwijatun and the plural is mutazawwijatun amutazawwijatun hunna hunna in fact hunna are they married hishamun la hunna lasna bi mutazawwijatin no they are not married now the reason why i always want you to and encourage you to memorize the conjugation because the conjugation always helps us a lot for example laysa laysa laysu laysat laysata lasna so we know that after hunna we have to use lasna hunna is the subject and lasna is predicate hunna lasna bi mutazawwijatin hisham says no they are not married and this is like a very powerful or emphatic that they are not married at all inna hunna sigharun indeed um they are young ba'duhunna so here we will read it as ba'du why as ba'du because it's a subject so ba'duhunna fil madrasati some of them are in the school al ibtidaiyati the primary wa ba'duhunna and some of them fil madrasati al mutawassitati and some of them are in the secondary school so here um as uh, we can see that hunna is a subject listeners predicate and when we say lasna bi mutazawwijat so in lasna basically we have the hidden pronoun which is hunna so that's why uh, we will say that hunna is uh, ismu lasna and bi mutazawwijat will be khabaru lasna bilalun bilal 
Alaka ikhwatun, do you have brothers? Hishamun, la laysa li. Okay, what will be the ending of ikhwa? Laysa li. Ikhwa. Yes, any idea? Ikhwatun, right? Laysa li ikhwatun, I don't have uh, brothers. Uh, inna li thalatha akhawatin. Indeed, I have three sisters. Inna li thalatha akhawatin. Now here, thalatha is mansub. Why is that? Why is it mansub? Because it is ismu inna. Ismu inna. So we can see over here that ismu inna will always be mansub. It doesn't matter uh, whatever the position of ismu inna in is, it will be always mansub. We know that jar majroor, uh, the prepositional phrase, normally comes ahead of the subject. And the reason why it comes ahead of the subject is for the purpose of emphasis. However, if it comes uh, ahead of the subject for the purpose of emphasis, that doesn't mean that we have to change the case endings or we have to change the Arab or we have to change the structure of the grammar. The grammatical structure will remain the same. So it's basically, if you keep, if you read it like this, inna thalatha akhawatin li, then it will be easy for you to understand that inna thalatha akhawatin. So you will say that thalatha akhawatin ismu inna and li is khabaru inna. But when this uh, jar majroor comes before, uh, before the subject, then there is a small confusion. So that's why we need to be very careful about it. So you, he says inna li thalatha akhawatin. Uh, uh, no, I don't have brothers. Indeed, I have three sisters. Bilalun, Bilal, a Muslimatun Hunna, are they uh, Muslims? Hishamun, Naam, yes. Hunna Muslimatun, they are Muslims. Walhamdulillah, and praise be to Allah. Alhamdulillah, we have completed the text of the lesson, lesson number two. And when we meet again, uh, we will inshallah do the exercises. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته